Greetings and welcome to another episode of Mega Campaigns of the Past, where I will showcase one of my Scandinavian games that I only played until 1893 for some reason. I don't know why, perhaps I got b bored of it. It was such a long time ago that I don't remember. Anyway, as you can see, we are the number two power in the world, and from what I can remember, we actually formed Scandinavia in Victoria 2. And we did that by actually just holding this and being strong. Because Norway were in Britain. And they suddenly said like, oh, Scandinavian wins, we want to join you. And you are supposed to lead Scandinavia. So I was like, oh, well, sure, I will lead Scandinavia. And thus I became the number two power. I think I was the number five or something. So, uh, I started this game as... Uh, the Guldsmed family when the Republic DLC for Crusader Kings 2 came out. Um, the Guldsmed family in Gotland here, a Republic, trading in the Baltics, and I took over Sweden, I think, and not much else. So, the most powerful countries in this world is um, the Byzantine Empire, as you can see. They have lots of little uh, countries inside of them, though. I think uh, it's their um, sphered vassals. Or satellites. Not entirely sure. Um, anyway, as you can see, Bavaria is in Spain for some reason. They are. Um, let's see, let's take a look at the nationality here. They are Aquitaine and Galician. France is here, and it looks very French compared to my other games. The shape is almost correct. We have Braunschweig, we have Bohemia, Moravia, Poland, and Hungary, so there's lots of smaller countries. Even though the Byzantine Empire is so incredibly huge. There are some oddities, of course, like the Navarra and Europe here, where Navarra is... I don't know where Navarra is. Are they here? No. Anyway, there are some really fun things in this campaign. Um, one of the fun things are that Benin here owns almost all of Africa. So, I don't know, they are a great power. Um... They are, let's see, rank, you can take a look at this, ranking, number 5, so they are number 5 in the world. The Byzantine Empire are number 3, we are number 2, and the first one is, like it usually is, China. As you can see, China is the number 1 great power. Um, they have conquered most of Russia. <laughs> Manchu still exists though, Korea is split between China and Manchu. Uh, Japan is around. Uh, this is Manchu, yes, Deccan is around. Egypt is for some reason uh, based here, but they have holdings there. I do remember that Egypt um, had all of this, but then the Byzantine Empire decided upon taking it all. Yeah, and these are um, Byzantine vassals, otherwise the text would never go like this. So, one of the really fun things in this campaign is the fact that a lot of nations migrated to the New World in America and moved their capitals there, including Aragon, as you can see. Uh, I think Navarra did as well. Yes, they did. Navarra. That's why um, it said Navarran Europe. Uh, Canada is the one of the only revolted stations, uh, nations, along with the United States. They are secondary powers. This is, Canada is only a civilized nation, even. And uh, here is the most fun part. Who would you think colonized the southern tip of South America? Of course, Cornwall! Yeah, because that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I don't know exactly where corn comes from, but I think corn comes from North America. Perhaps it came from South America, I don't know, really. Uh, still, um, this is not where Cornwall is supposed to be. Cornwall is supposed to be in uh, in Cornwall. So I was overjoyed when that happened, because it was so random. Uh, Brazil! Big uh, colonial power, but only a secondary power, because they had such a small population. They didn't have enough people to work in the factories. Uh, some random nations here, like Fes is here, for some reason. And the Cornwall owns some stuff here. And Bavaria? Uh, there's some weird stuff going on. Anyway, 
Um, if we take a look at the nationalities here, you can see that there's a lot of Germans, Frenchmen, and then uh, this is all Norwegian, Swedish, and Danish. Um, America is Catalan. This is German, I think. Yeah, Hanoverian. Navarra is Castilian. The United States are Dixie. This is all Norwegian. Canada is Canadian. No? They are actually... Oh yeah, I edited some um, some stuff. Uh, Canada were called uh, Vinland first. But actually in another game. So I changed the culture name to uh, Vinlander. I'll, I'll uh, show you that game another time. Venezuela, Venezuela. North Andean, even. Cornwall is um, English. It should really be Cornish, but... Hey, there, there is no Cornish culture in any Paradox game. So let's just pretend it's Cornish. Haiti is uh, Carabina. And, uh, yeah, civilization levels. I think everyone is Western. No, the Oirat Horde is not Westernized. They are 50% civilized. Ache here, 80%. Is there anyone else that's not civilized? No, everyone else is civilized, so... Yet another one of those worlds where everyone is um, super westernized really quickly. Or um, civilized. Here's another one, Rashbatana. Seeing as it's only 1893. And uh, if we take a look at the... Hmm. Yeah, the, the ranking. We can take a look at the ranking for fun. Take a look here. Yeah, Aragon is the number 8 world power. So, if we take a look at the ledger, we can see that um, the total score here favors China, followed by us. Byzantine Empire, France, Benin. The literacy is currently uh, at its all-time high in Canada. And I think... We are not on this list yet because we have too many people. Wait. Scandinavia. Let's look for it. Scandinavia. 92% literacy. Yeah, so we are a very literate country. Political systems. Let's see if there's... Um, yeah, there are some communists. Colombia and FES. And one anarcho-liberal. That's Lithuania. Uh, but almost everyone is conservative. With a liberal spring. Not really taking hold anywhere. Lots of reactionaries, and also some socialists. Uh, Scandinavia is socialist. We are socialist. Because Scandinavia must be socialist. Um, slavery is allowed in a lot of places. The whole... Uh, let's see. Uh, actually, there's no real out-of-place countries. Well, then Ireland well, Ireland and Gelre and Lithuania and Granada and places like that still allow slavery. But we can take a look if anyone actually has any slaves. It's always fun to look at. Yes, China, Deccan, Punjab. Let's see, is there anyone fun here? Lithuania has some slaves. They have 9,000 slaves. And uh, the most populous country in the world is, mm, of course, uh, China. Followed by Deccan and the Byzantine Empire. China really has so much of the world's population that they cannot be beaten. Ever. So, our population is mainly Swedish, Norwegian and Danish. But they have lots of different religions. We have lots of Native Americans incorporated. Catholics and Protestants. And, uh, well, yeah. Unions Socialisterna is our party of choice. We are split between the socialists and the conservatives. As you can see, we have um, started working towards having nice social reforms. I think that was one of my goals with this campaign, to keep um, the economy up while still treating my people well, as I usually play as a bastard in Victoria 2 and never even give them like a, a workday shorter than unlimited. Um... Yeah, we have the Temperance League in place, and penal colonies, and Egyptian excavation. Women's suffrage, of course. 
We have not prohibited liquor, though. We don't have a national bank, either. And, uh... Yeah, is there anything else I could show you? Take a look at the party loyalty for fun. As you can see, most of the world is conservative, unsurprisingly, because... At least in this version of Victoria 2, the Ahal's Divided one, conservatism is way too popular. And uh, if anything replaces it, it's liberalism. And communism and fascism almost never um, strike through. I hope to play my next campaign in, a in not a house divided, but rather, um, I think it's called Heart of Darkness, the new, uh, camp the new um, Victoria 2 expansion. It focuses on Africa with some procedurally generated uh, colonies. I think that's the system they refined into the EU4 converter system. Uh, the CK2 to EU4 converter that creates dynamic tags. As well as um, the upcoming EU4 expansion, uh, Conquest of Paradise. They will probably also use the procedurally generated tag system. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching this episode of uh, Mega Campaigns of the Past, and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for watching.